Five years older, two inches taller. Morrison has the weight advantage. Morrison has been a pro for two years. Baulun won, but as we've noted, both of them have had a lot of amateur experience. Mm -hmm. And let's call on our Nevada State judge, Cindy Barton. What are the rules for this fight, Cindy? Well, Lynn, we're New Jersey State rules again for a 10-round fight. It's a 10-point must system. Referee does not score the fight. Standing eight count is in effect. The three knockdown rule is in effect. The bell cannot save the fighter in any round, including the 10th, and the doctor can stop the fight. All right, so it's time for the introductions of the fighters. Let's go to our ring announcer, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is scheduled for 10 rounds. It's in the heavyweight division, and the referee for this contest is Steve Smoker. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he's wearing the red trunks and weighs an even 209 pounds. His professional record, 10 victories with six KOs, only one defeats. He's originally from the USSR, now fighting out of Yonkers in New York. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Yuri Vaulin. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with red, white, and blue trim. He weighs an even 223 pounds, undefeated with a record of 26 and 0, 22 KOs. From Kansas City, ladies and gentlemen, he's one of the top ranked heavyweights in the world today, Tommy the Duke Morrison. He comes out. He comes out. You got an interpreter? Let him come out. You want to come out? Come out. Oh, you were giving her. Good. You were giving your instructions at the weigh-in. Obey my commands at all times. Obey the bell at all times. And protect yourself at all times. So touch him up or we don't go. Touch him. Very good. Let's roll. Joe Vaulin is one of uh, several Soviet fighters that was brought over by uh, Lou Falcino. Is there a common thread that runs among them? Well, actually, uh, he's uh, uh, he's one of the few uh, of the uh, Soviet fighters that uh, are still around. They sent a couple of them back. I think they uh, they kept one of them, and I wouldn't even dare to pronounce his name right now. But it's a lot harder than Vaulin. And Vaulin bounced right into the ring. This has been set up as one of those Rocky Four versus Rocky Five fights. A uh, few of the Soviet fighters had a hard time adapting to the American pro style. You know, they have so many fights over there, they get uh, in a groove to fight one way, and it's almost impossible to break into that habit. And that's what Tommy Gallagher said he was having a problem with Baula. Morrison just trying to check him out and see what he could do. Well, Baulin's moving the way that Tommy Gallagher didn't want him to move, and that's to his right. He wanted. Uh, Baulin to move to his left to stay away from that big, big left hook of uh, Morrison's. And Morrison slipped down. Referee Steve Smoker. Opening round is scheduled for 10. Morrison's aggressiveness. Wow, and took that shot real well. It hit him uh, on top of the head, but it still landed very solidly and uh, didn't seem to affect him in the least. Morrison had told us uh, you see him dipping down. He wants to work the body a bit, but uh, hasn't done it yet. Morrison doing some damage with both hands. Roundhouse right glances off the head of Vaulin. 
Tommy Gallagher, uh, Bob Owens' trainer, told me he wants him nowhere near those ropes. He's got to stay in the center of that ring and use that jab. And as a matter of fact, he's got a beautiful jab. It comes out straight, comes out fast and hard. But he hasn't done much uh, other than throw that jab. Bowen hasn't. That's the punch again! You hear Gallagher screaming for him to throw that left hand. He thinks that Morrison's open for it, and uh, Bowen isn't no responding. In the final seconds of this first round of the heavyweight fight, Tommy Morrison and Yuri Vaulin from Latvia. too much in the corner right now but I got to assume that Morrison's corner is telling him to stop following him around and cut off that ring and hit the body more it's something that he said you know, he was going to do and he has it of course on the uh, we're a Let's little bit closer to Vaulin's nice corner and they are speaking English Vaulin doesn't speak much of it but understands a little bit Tommy Gallagher, Vaulin's trainer, urging him to throw that left hand, but it was a it was a nicely fought round for Vaulin. Round two. Well, the CompuBond uh, stat on the uh, jab thrown in round one was 33% uh, landed by Vaulin and 17% uh, landed by Morrison. Of course, he only threw 12 jabs. There goes that left hand that they were asking for, and he's landing it. Baulun getting some punches in there. Because Morrison headhunting again. He should be hitting that body at every opportunity. Morrison swinging and hitting air. Well, this kid's an elusive uh, uh, target, this Baulun. And uh, his head, he leans back. He's tall. He should be hitting that body. It's the closest thing to him. Morrison landing a right. Big roar through the crowd moments ago with the arrival of Muhammad Ali at ringside. Another straight hard left jab or right jab landed by Bow. Morris is starting to look puffy already and it's only been around and a half. Well, they said they expected the fight to be difficult, that Baulun was awkward. They wanted to get Morrison some rounds. They had already looked ahead and tried to book Ray Mercer for August. Well, they might have been putting the uh, ooh, left for Morrison. Putting the cart ahead of the horse. Uh, from uh, this point of view right now, uh, Baul is not doing too badly. He's holding his own right now. A lot of people thought this fight was going to end real early. Work out of it, work out of it. No break, don't worry. Keep moving, keep moving. A little blood around the mouth of Morrison. Well, he's taking several jabs right off the chin, and uh, that opened him up rather early. Hands up, hands up. He's certainly in a dogfight here against the Russian fighter. Again! Again! I'm here, I'm here. Step, step. Well, it looks like they've been working on uh, Baulin's killer instincts here. Tommy Gallagher said he had a hard time getting him to really open up on his opponent. And here he looks like he means business tonight. He doesn't want to just win. He wants to do some damage tonight. Look at that. Putting a three-punch combination and getting out. This is what he got to do all night to win the fight. Baulin in good shape, dancing away. We wind down towards the end of the second round. Right hand from Morrison. Well, you know, Bill Caton, uh, Tommy Morrison's manager, told me they might have made a mistake taking this fight because uh, of the awkwardness of this southpaw, and unfortunately, it's turning it's turning out to be true. And there's a champion. There's a live picture. 
from his dressing area, his trainer Lou Duva, right behind him. The man who has somewhat been overlooked in the promotion, even though he is the undisputed World Heavyweight Champion. George Foreman has garnered all of the attention and a good deal of the support. And of course, coming up, we will have what's being billed as the Battle of the Ages. 42-year-old George Foreman, 28-year-old of Vander Holyfield. But first, there's the business of Tommy Morrison and Yuri Vaulin. Round three, it's scheduled for 10. Well, the jab seems to be the uh, deciding factor in this fight so far. Uh, Vaulin landing 32% to Morrison's 9%. He's only thrown 22. He's been throwing wild and uh, trying to headhunt, and it's not, uh, it's not serving him very well in this fight. And the longer Morrison goes, he treads into unfamiliar waters because most of his fights have, la uh, have ended in the first couple of rounds, Joe. Especially his last few fights. Uh, he fought uh, Piglin Thomas, knocked him out in one. Quick and, Tillis. Uh, James Quick Tillis. What has he had, about 20 uh, knockouts in his last 22 fights, I mm -hmm. believe. And, uh, and all early. Exactly. All in the first couple of rounds. Well, Tommy Gallagher telling uh, Vaulin to move, and the one time he didn't, he got caught with a left hook to the head. And that's what he's got to do, use that mobility and get out of the way of these big bombs. You mentioned something that uh, nobody knew, Joe, that uh, uh, Marson has an injured right hand. Do you think that's telling a tale? <laughs> well, you know, uh, he did. He had a severely injured knuckle, and in confidence he showed it to me, and uh, I didn't say anything before the fight, but now that it's going on, it won't make a bit of difference. But uh, he really hasn't been throwing it that much. And he's, uh, I've seen him knock out quite a few guys with that right hand. But right now, he's limited. He hasn't been throwing very much at all. It may be bothering him. You see, he didn't follow up with that left hook. He should have thrown that right uppercut right into the midsection after that. In fact, he doubled over in pain and fell to the canvas during sparring when he hit his sparring partner, Jerry Jones. Oh! And Valuulin landing. He staggered Morrison. Boy, Morrison has never been down in his career, and he wobbled there. Well, he's got to stick to his game plan here, Vaul, and he shouldn't get overly confident because Tommy is still strong, even though he wobbled him. But this is the point where Tommy Gallagher said Vaul needed to go in, go after him now. Don't let him off the hook. Well, Don't let him back in the fight. He's in, but he's holding on. He should stay to the outside. He's landing from the outside. Why quit there? He lands exactly again like with a left. Vaulin putting on a show in the third round. Putting on a show and, and, and catapulting himself to the top of the heavyweight division if he takes out Morrison. He's rated in the top ten in all three uh, categories here. And Morrison landed a left, but after paying the price. Morrison cannot just be content to throw those punches and stop. He's got to throw those punches and step to the side. Get out of harm's way there. Don't be in line for a counter shot from Morrison. A strong round for the underdog, Yuri Vaulin, who's taken over control of this fight through three. Here on the replay, you see uh, Vaulin landing that jab. Bingo, right on the button with that left hand, and then followed up with that right hook to the temple. And that's that'll do a lot of damage in itself. Here again, another angle of that. And left hook right on the chin, followed by a left, and another left. A beautiful three-punch combination set up by the jab. It's the overhead shot. Steps in, right cross, left hand, right cross. It's amazing that uh, Tommy Morrison really stood up to those three shots. That would have put any... Uh, normal man down. Look at this. Turned his head completely around. Almost looking at the same combination that Buster Douglas hit Mike Tyson with to put him out and down. Mm. He won't be able to take many and more of those, many and more of those combinations uh, if he doesn't do something to turn this tide in this fight. Big third round for Yuri Vaulin. Let's see how Morrison can respond here in the fourth. 
lunged with a right from long distance and the crowd reacted to it. Well, it hit Baul and right on the chin and uh, well, he came right back with his own two punches, but it looked like it uh, it stunned him for a second. Me, me, right? Come on. You know, Baul and told us yesterday that he, de he depends on this right jab. That that really is his bread and butter punch. Come on, come on, Yuri. Come on, Yuri. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Come on, baby. A left caught going backwards. Hey, punch, punch. has taken Tommy Morrison out of his game plan here. When Vaulin does get on the inside, he's allowing, uh, when Morrison gets on the inside, he's allowing Vaulin to tie him up on the inside. He should forget about trying to push him off. He should be banging him to the body, trying to wear him down and slow him down. He's, he isn't getting many opportunities to hit him. He should take advantage of it on the inside. Another one, too, landed right on top of the head by Vaulin. Punch out of there, Tom. Referee Steve Sloger telling Tommy Morrison to punch his way out of there, out of the clinches. Morrison had said something to Smoger. I'll let you work out of here. Go ahead. That's the voice you hear. All right, hold on. Walk him now. Hey, don't punch. Don't punch. Tommy, don't punch. Tommy. And a left hand from Baul. Oh, your hands are loose. That's it. Push. Morrison finally going to the body. If he were doing that more consistently, it would definitely be taking uh, the legs away from Baul. That had been the game plan. They wanted Morrison to come in low to be explosive. Don't punch. Don't punch. All right. Good. Break. Don't punch. Baul's corner is urging him to jab. The pace has slowed down a lot here uh, in this round, but they they certainly expended a lot of energy in these first uh, uh, four rounds uh, uh, for heavyweights. Now. A lot more clutching and grabbing here in the fourth. Oh, dynamite. Baula with another fine combination. I'll tell you what, Tommy Morrison is really uh, uh, unsteady on his feet. His uh, his ankles are turning. His, his legs look weak underneath him right now, Len. Another pretty good round for Yuri Vaulin. So maybe his people were right all along when they said, don't take us lightly. Don't look ahead to your next fight. Take a look at us. And let's check in with Cindy Barton to see how she has scored it through four rounds. Cindy? Well, Len, I have Vaulin winning 39 to 37. He's applying the pressure. He's controlling the fight. And uh, I think it's pretty clear cut at this point. Are you very surprised by this, Joe? Well, you had to favor Morrison going into this fight, but Tommy Gallagher told us that uh, Baulin was going to surprise everybody. He was, he was confident, uh, as you could be, that Baulin was in this fight. Uh, people were kind of writing him off going into this, but you look across the ring, you see Morrison. He looks like he was the underdog in this fight because he is getting banged up looking. You know, the rap on the Soviet fighters is they're more headhunters than tacticians, but uh, Yuri Baulin certainly... Uh, be very tactical tonight. He certainly is. Uh, Tommy Gallagher in the corner told him to jab, move, jab, move. He knows the other punches will follow. He just doesn't want him standing still until Tommy Morrison is almost out or completely tired. Because he's still dangerous. Get off his neck, Yuri. No, no. And now Morrison on the attack. Morrison missing wildly on that one, but for the first time, he stunned Baulin. Well, just like I said, he was still dangerous, and, and he's got him rocked. Let me tell you, and Gallagher was worried about that. Dynamite uppercut. And the crowd clearly on Morrison's side, as you can tell, as he's come alive here in round number five. Well, this is something uncharacteristic of uh, Baulin, and that's slugging it out with a guy like Tommy Morrison. We haven't seen this in his previous fights. Work out of there, you're loose, you're loose. 
It was Baulin's fight through the first four, and Morris had still oh. tied with a big left hand. And Baul is hurt. Body shot. That's it. They may stop the fight here. Doesn't look like he can continue. He looks like that shot took everything out of him. Seven. Eight. Okay. Gallagher telling him not to quit, and he doesn't. But he sure looked on the verge of it. Break, 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 break. Step, step. Oh, and Baulin hurt again. Turn his back. That's got to be it. A fighter One, turns his back. I can't two, believe that Smoger is actually three, letting him get away with this. Four. That's it. That's, that's, it, it. that's it. Tommy Morrison, who was in trouble and rocked in the fourth round but did not go down, ends it in the fifth. Well, he finally decided his corner had to have told him to go back downstairs or finally go downstairs because he didn't do it in the first four rounds. And that's what turned the, turned the tide for him. At 206 of the fifth round, that'll be the official time. And Tommy Morrison goes to 27 and 0. 206 of the fifth. At their Olin. That really hurt Morrison in the fourth. All right, this is round number five now as we take a look at the replay. Left to the head. Morrison jumping, strong, solid left. What a rocket. That's where he first got Vaulin in trouble. And it was the body shots which made him take the first count. And the second count was also from the body shot and then the, the fight was stopped as well but this is what started it and this is the second time around you see Baul immediately react and turn around he had done it once early in the round and here the second time and referee Steve Smoger goes over and starts the count and eventually stopped it Olin low that's what they wanted him to do they wanted him to be low explosive work the body and that's exactly what he did to take out Yuri Vaulin in the fifth round. Quite a performance by Tommy Morrison. So now he can look ahead perhaps to Ray Mercer in a battle of undefeated young heavyweights in August. Let's go to the official decision. Michael Buffer up in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Steve Smoger stops this contest at two minutes and six seconds of the fifth round. The winner by TKO victory, his record now 27 and 0 with 23 KOs from Kansas City, Tommy the Duke Morris. Let's have a round of applause for a very, very game. Yuri Bauli from Yonkers, New York, by way of the Soviet Union. Let's give him a hand. All right, the final CompuBox statistics the number of punches thrown, Bauli. Way more than Tommy Morrison. Morrison's percentage just a little bit better, but you saw the big left hand to the head that started the problems for Vaulin, and then it was the succession of body shots that led to the stoppage at 206 of the fifth round. And Joe Goosen's in the ring right now with Tommy Morrison. Joe, take it away. Thank you, Len. Listen, I got Tommy. Uh, Tommy, your worst nightmare almost came true tonight. Those southpaws, you told me you don't like them, you have trouble with them, and uh, it took you a few rounds before you got on track. That's true. I don't think uh, I'm, I'm the only one that doesn't like them. I mean, everybody had, you know, southpaws have a reputation of being very awkward and unorthodox, and uh, it proved to be true tonight. Uh, fortunately, I think conditioning played a, a major factor, and we're able to uh, you go to the body, which is something I should have done a hell of a lot sooner. But, uh, you know, things don't always happen the way they should. But fortunately, uh, my trainer and the condition that was in was able to come out on top. Was, uh, was it your corner man who told you to finally go to the body, or was it a decision you made on your own? Well, going to the body is something that I normally do, uh, you know, just about every time I go to the head almost. The first 30 seconds of the first round, usually. <laughs> and that's why we've been successful in the past with the body shots. But I'd like to say hello to everybody back in Kansas City and Oklahoma. I'd like to wish my dentist, Bill Bush, happy birthday.
listen, uh, Tom, let me ask you something. We know that uh, before the fight you told me, I saw that right knuckle was hurt badly. How did it affect you tonight? Did it have any uh, play in you not throwing uh, it as was, much? Uh, there, there was a little bit of pain there, but you know, as, you, as we all know, anybody that's very knowledgeable about the sport of boxing, uh, when you have the drilling, it certainly does uh, a lot for you. So we're, we're fortunate enough to throw it. The left hook uh, is basically what did it for us. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it didn't happen a lot sooner. Well, well, I, feel like, I feel like we learned a lot from this fight. Exactly. Bill, listen, uh, your worst nightmare almost came true like you told me. You were worried about this fight. I was worried about that because of the southpaw problem. Ordinarily, the first punch that is usually thrown by Tommy is a left hook to the body. And here it took him five rounds to throw his first real effective left hook. Were you surprised by Volin? <laughs> were you surprised by uh, maybe the, the couple left hands that he landed on you? Shook you a little bit? Uh, I was very surprised at his speed. I know they had very fast hands, but it seemed like it was even multiplied once we were in here. Very, uh, very accurate and knew his range very well, as most southpaws do. I think because of the southpaw position, kind of threw, obviously it throws everything off, not able to do what you normally can against an orthodox fighter. But, uh, you know, God was with us. We came out on top. Well, you look great tonight when you finished up strong. Yeah. Bill, let me ask you something. What about the future for Tom? What's he got going on? Well, we're going to probably fight Mercer in August. That's our plan at this time. And uh, if you get by Mercer, what's next? We'll see what the future pairs. Exactly. Well, I think he's got a great future for uh, Tommy uh, Morrison here. Great fight, Tommy. Thank Congratulations. Thank you like to thank, uh, Top Ring of Man Events for having us here. All right. And thank you very much. And back to Len Berman ringside. All right. Thank you, Joe. Uh, let's take them one fight at a time. And uh, Mercer in August is the, is the next probability in a battle of young undefeated heavyweights. And uh, a bit of uh, life imitating art. Uh, Tommy Morrison in that street brawl in Rocky Five and got into quite a brawl here, uh, getting rocked in the fourth round and winning it in the fifth. Let's go back up into the ring now to Joe Goosen. Thank you, Len. I've got uh, Yuri Vaulin here with me. Yuri, you almost had that fight in the bag. You had him hurt several times. Unfortunately, you couldn't finish him off. What happened? I received a strong punch in my stomach. I'm so sorry. This was my fight. Well, uh, let me ask you something. Uh, uh, when you were in training and you uh, you prepared for this fight, I'm sure you had sparring partners that hit you in the stomach. Was it a case that he just hit a lot harder than anybody else you've ever fought before? Uh, on one training, I received punch in my stomach. I just uh, no control. If I work with my stomach, I can receive today two punch more. Usually, I control his hands because he have good hook. I control all times these hands in my chin. <laughs> right. Mistake. Let me ask you something, Yuri. You had him hurt a couple times in the early rounds. Did you have a problem trying to, did you try to finish him off, or was it a, a fact that he just survived your attack? When I find his chin, I'm very hurry up. A little bit sink if I his free place. So you, you tried to take him out, you just couldn't do it? I'm uh, hurry up, finish this fight. This is my mistake. All right, Yuri. And, and how about the future? Are you going to continue? Uh, uh, do you foresee yourself continuing in the heavyweight division? Uh, I must uh, uh, teach this uh, mistake. Teach me now. No more this mistake. All right, in other words, you've got to work on the fact that if you get hit in the body anymore, you've got to be able to absorb that punishment. Yeah, my, time, my trainer Tommy uh, usually t say me, Yuri, work a million push-ups on your body. I don't listen to him, so sorry. He, he listened. We had the best sparring possible. We had Seamus McDonough and Derek Eisman, who punched just as hard as Morrison, punching him to the body for three weeks up in Kutcher's. And this guy I'm, has the fight. We're right there. We're, we're a whisker away. And, and he got hit in the body. It's he a shame. It certainly is a shame. And uh, back to you, Len Ringside. 